So guys, one of the first things you want to do before working on your doors is actually check your hinges. And this Camaro here is no different than any others. It's uh, got a lot of play in the hinges. So we're going to go ahead and rebuild this set. Bring you guys along. Alright guys, now with that uh, door out of the way, we can come in here and get a really good look at our hinges. We can see how that bush in there is just gone. Pretty much the same thing on the lower side. Before I go any further on rebuilding these hinges, I have taken some really good pictures. The thing about it is once you get all these apart, it's gonna be kind of confusing how they go together. The next thing I'm gonna do is take a Sharpie and I'm gonna mark where the hinges are on the cowl of the car. And this is just a quick reference because uh, eventually, this is all going to be off the car again. Now once we rebuild the hinges, I want to get the door back on the car, get it aligned, make sure everything's okay before I actually remove the skin. There's a spring right here for the detent that's going to cause me quite a bit of trouble. I'm going to go ahead and remove that and then we'll remove the hinges. Now to remove that spring, I've seen guys do it with a vise. Um, I actually have the tool here, it's made by Steck. It's a pretty decent tool, I think. And uh, we're gonna give it a try right here. We'll get some glasses on in case this thing gets away from us. We'll probably take this off with it being on the bench hinge is still mounted to the car so let's just take it off right here and you see right here I've got the spring compressed in the tool we're gonna go ahead and take a tension off of it right there's our spring Alright guys, so we got our uh, hinges off of the car, we've got them up here on the workbench, and now we're going to go ahead and separate the two pieces. You can see right here, they've been staked down by the factory so that the pins wouldn't work themselves out. We'll have to grind that off and then we'll be able to separate it. So let's get to it. Now here you can see where our bushings are installed. 
This one is really loose. Hopefully it's just the bushing that's worn, not anything else. This one don't have the stakes. This one may have been changed before. Okay guys, that put up a little bit of a fight, as you can see. Those parts have probably been on there a long time, and uh, they give us a run for our money. Probably would have went a lot better if I go ahead and anchor this vise down to this table. Uh, right now, I use this table quite a bit for a little bit of everything, and I just kind of got it secured with one screw. But uh, we got them both apart, and like I mentioned, it's going to get real confusing at this point. You got four pieces and the way they lock in together, it can get really confusing with all the different pieces. But you guys took good notes, right? And uh, we also got our pictures. Kind of goes back to that old saying, a dullest pencil is better than the sharpest memory, right? Or in this case, a digital camera. So this is the part of the video where it's a moment of truth. We're going to figure out whether these hinges are rebuildable and there's a couple things that decide that. What will happen is once the hinges start to wear into the bushing, eventually if you let it go then it just keeps wearing into the hinge itself and uh, if that's the case you'll need an oversized bushing. Also you'll notice the door when you open it it will actually drop and then sometimes when you go to close the door, it won't close. As a matter of fact, the latch will hit on the striker and it will eventually damage the door latch. And I'll insert a picture here of a door latch that's been damaged by that. This is off the 81 Camaro. This is the lower passenger side door hinge. The pin, it went in from the top down and I've just got it kind of put together without the bushings right now because I want to clean these up and paint them. But it's this piece here that actually gets the bushings, top and bottom. And this is what I was saying a few minutes ago about the moment of truth. You want to check and just make sure that you got a good snug fit. Don't push them all the way down in there yet until you're ready to install them but you'll want to really snug fit on that, on both sides. Otherwise, the option is you'll have to get the oversized bushing or you might have to weld the hole up and re-drill it, which um, I don't know, that's probably, that's probably pretty difficult just to get it exactly right or replace the hinge altogether. This lower side looks like it's a good candidate for rebuild. All right, now the uh, top passenger side hinge the actual pin was pushed up from the bottom going up to the top and uh, go ahead and get it apart this piece right here is what will get the bushings and also notice you want this to be in this orientation when we go back together otherwise you're not going to be happy like I said this is the piece that will get the bushings Again, we just want to double check. Something that I found out on these, this top hole is the same as the bottom hinge and uh, pretty snug. It's not as snug as I'd like it to be, but you guys seen how much trouble we had getting them loose. And that kind of is an indication that uh, they were worn, but they went plumb wore out. Now in the kits online that I was looking at, they do come with two of these splines. They're a little bit larger. And on this particular hinge, the one with the detent, 
the bottom hole there is larger. Now any of the other three holes, if they were worn and you you were to put the uh, bushing up in there and it it just kind of fit in there loosely and had slop in it, then uh, that's where you would use an oversized one. This is where probably a lot of people would stop and clean these things up and put them back together. But uh, there's one other piece here and that's the actual roller on the detent. And this one's in pretty bad shape. You can see there's a, a crack in the rubber part there. Really to change this out, normally a lot of people will do is uh, they'll grind these stakes down, and hammer this out. From there you'd be able to take a drift and knock the pin out and replace the uh, bushing. However, the guys at Nasty Z has come through for us again. Uh, like I've mentioned in previous videos, an excellent resource over there for knowledge on these second gen cars. There's a thread over there. I'll put a link in the description below. They've taken a later model pin. The roller's just a little bit wider and they are actually put it on these hinges and had success with it working. And uh, like I said, I'll put a link in the description below to that thread. And also there's the uh, GM part number for the roller. And the pin, it just came in a plastic bag, but I've got the part number for it too. I've got both of these off of eBay and I'll put links in the description below. So we're gonna try to replace this. For right now, I just wanna get it removed. And what I would like to do, I don't really wanna mess with this. So what I'm gonna to try to do is actually grind part of this piece off so I can remove the roller. And then I may have to heat it, but I'm gonna to try to grab what's left of the pin and pull it out. We'll see how it goes. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it with this little vise on the table. I may have to actually go down to the shop to get it done. My large vise over here on the other side of the garage, that whole table is just covered with uh, 81 Camaro internal door parts. So I don't really wanna mess any of that up. But we're gonna try it. I'm gonna bring you guys along. We'll get this off of here. Then we'll be ready to uh, get these cleaned up. Okay guys, this little vice here on the table just ain't gonna do it. It's uh, just too much bouncing. So I, I have stepped down to the shop area and I uh, used the vice that's mounted to the workbench down there. And it took quite a bit of heat to get this thing just barely to start moving. You can see right there, the splines are coming out. So I didn't wanna take all the fun away from you guys. So I went ahead and uh, Stopped there and brought it back up here to see if we could finish it on camera. I'll take the camera down there, but it's a nasty day outside. We're in the middle of an ice storm. But I think we got it moving enough that it's going to come our way now. I have a silane oxygen torch if we needed it. And I believe this propane is going to do all right. So I have marred that up a little bit where I was uh, hitting on it with that punch. Take a die grinder and just dress that up just a little bit. Okay guys, so this is looking pretty decent. I think it'll be fine once we get it painted and get some epoxy on it. Hopefully it'll look like that we were never there. So guys, this is the first set of hinges that I'm rebuilding. 
The one on Project Overkill was rebuilt by the previous owner. And if you remember, I've got a video on the channel. It's a parts update for Project Overkill that I actually bought a set of the Ring Brother hinges. And I hadn't really made my mind up what I was gonna do with this car. The 81 is gonna be more of a budget build, but um, I may end up putting a set of Ring Brother hinges on it. I'm just not real sure. But uh, we are working on the doors and uh, this has definitely gotta be done. And I just wanna bring you guys along. Speaking of that, I got a mess to clean up here from all this. I'm gonna clean it up. I'm going to blast these hinges up. I've got some other parts that I want to blast as well. And then uh, the next time I turn the camera on, we'll be shooting some epoxy. Mm -hmm. 